the back may not be your first area that you think of when you think of clinical procedures or surface palpation to help you identify different landmarks within the body. However, there are a couple of very key procedures and things that are done by a physician that will be performed here in this area of the body. Let's begin by looking at the posterior median or mid-vertebral line. And as its name implies, this is going to lie in the midline of the vertebral column. The bony landmarks that can be felt along the posterior aspect of the back are the spinous processes. And these will be the posteriorly directed pieces of bone that are going to lie superficially. And in a very thin individual, you can actually see a collection of small bumps along the midline. Now, in everybody, you can palpate the vertebra prominence, or I should say in majority of individuals. Now, the vertebra prominence is the spinous process of the seventh cervical vertebra, the most inferior of these bones. So it can be a great landmark that can be used to palpate both cervical or thoracic levels. If we continue to move inferiorly along the median or midvertebral line, we can see it's going to create a groove between two large groups of muscles to either side. These groups are known as the erector spinae, and they're important postural muscles in our lower back that are going to extend up through the thoracic region as well. Now, the erector spinae are going to attach inferiorly towards the hip bone, otherwise known as our ilium. And the ilium is going to terminate posteriorly at the posterior superior iliac spine. This is also going to help you identify where we're starting to meet the sacrum as well as the fourth and the fifth spinous processes of our lumbar vertebrae, which can be a great visual landmark for a physician to be able to see this and then feel it if they're going to be counting up to do a lumbar puncture or an epidural. If they continue to move laterally from the posterior superior iliac spine, or the PSIS, they're going to fill along the iliac crest. And we can see that the iliac crest is actually going to be higher than what we think of as our gluteal region. So if you're looking at the folds within the buttocks, you're going to be a little bit too low if you're looking for where the approximate midpoint of a safe hip injection would be. You want to avoid the large sciatic nerve in that region. Another area that can be useful for a physician is they're going to be listening or auscultating to the lungs posteriorly in a small window between muscles known as the triangle of auscultation. And this is going to be near a few large uh, muscles in the area that will create the borders that are difficult to see. However, we can usually feel or palpate the inferior angle of the scapula, which will lie just lateral to this small triangle. If a patient were to lean forward, they would be able to have this triangular window enlarged, which will ease the ability to listen to the health of the lungs in that individual. Now, moving from the inferior angle superiorly, a physician is going to be able to feel along the medial aspect of the scapula. A more prominent uh, landmark to feel in the scapula is the spine of the scapula. And if you reach your right hand up over your left shoulder and use your fingers, you can feel that spine moving medially which can also help you find that medial or vertebral border of the scapula. So the scapula is going to have a medial aspect and a lateral aspect that are going to come together at that inferior angle, which again can usually be felt in some individuals.